Talking about innovations and technology, today on Education Dialogues, we're decoding something very interesting for you. Big data, what is it and how is it going to bring about a revolution in the future? I have with me Ramaya Krishnan, who's the Dean for Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, so thank you so much for talking to us. Um, so talking about big data, it is still very new to many people in India specifically. It's still in its very decent uh, stages. What would you say about big data, if you could decode that uh, for our viewers a little bit? So um, b big data is a buzzword at one level. Um, but I think the word big is important here. Um, we've always had data. Um, and the question is, what is different about what we are talking about today is, you know, using uh, the camera on a cell phone, that's image data. With video, it's video, uh, which is streaming data. Uh, in the uh, use of GPS, for instance, on a, uh, in a, cam on a cell phone, it's uh, data about position, space, and time, which may vary as, you one, as one moves. Mm -hmm. So the variety of data that one currently has access to has changed tremendously. Yeah. So that's one. So volume has changed, as in it's bigger. Variety has changed, as in there are all these different kinds of data we are having to uh, process. Mm -hmm. The velocity has changed, as in the need to respond to data more quickly. And then there is the need to ensure veracity, which is that we want to make sure that the data is of high quality and is reliable enough that you can actually sort of rely on it to make good decisions. So for instance, to give you the first example, uh, and the simple uh, example would be one where um, you have uh, information about, you know, uh, people carry Fitbits on them, right? You know these things that you keep track of, how many steps did I walk yeah. today? Um, and if you have this data over time, mm -hmm. and you have it over a large number of people, you are able to now use this information uh, to not only provide feedback to individuals, you can do what's called population health management yeah. much better. So this is on the healthcare side. You could do this similarly for cars, right? So you have GPS on your vehicle, and you could say if you drive below the speed limit and you're fully observant, of uh, all speed limits, I'll give you a better um, insurance price than would otherwise be the case. So these are two very concrete examples yeah. uh, of uh, working with large amounts of data. The issue of privacy is an interesting one, which we'll come back to. Yeah. Uh, but I hope these give you a little more uh, concrete examples of how you know, you're know you working with large amounts of, yeah. of data. So according to a recent Forbes article, big data was very useful during the Nepal earthquake. And getting aid to the victims there, how can it prove useful during such situations and more instances like this? Yeah, so uh, actually the, 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 the example from Nepal, mm -hmm. um, actually the genesis of this goes back uh, to a project um, that came from, um, from Africa. It was a project, it was, it's called Ushahidi is the name of the, the uh, project and in Swahili it means testament or mm -hmm. proof. Mm -hmm. Suppose there was a, uh, a man-made or a natural kind of disaster. Mm -hmm. um, let's say there was a flood mm -hmm. and you'd like to know which roads are possible and which roads are not. Mm -hmm. Then if you have people being sensors, mm -hmm. then they could one, take photographs of, now here's where the phone becomes very handy. Mm -hmm. I can take a picture mm -hmm. of the street mm -hmm and I can upload it. Mm -hmm. And now the map could be uploaded with a picture, or you could capture video, mm -hmm. and you could say this road is possible, mm -hmm. but it's only possible by four-wheel drive vehicles, for instance. Yeah. So now you've updated the map mm -hmm. where earlier a road might have been tagged for use by any vehicle, mm -hmm. but now somebody who's there on the ground has provided an update mm -hmm. that says this road is not possible at all mm -hmm. because the road caved in yeah or a bridge was washed away, or in the case of the earthquake. Yeah. So in effect, what you're getting is people being sens pe people working as sensors, mm -hmm. pro and this could be either people, yeah. or you could actually have sensors in the ground, okay. which are devices, which are in the ground, which could actually transmit information, mm -hmm. and that then allows um, first responders, like um, emergency medical response, yeah. fire, or police, to decide how to get to a given location. How difficult is it going to be to work with big data in, in India and of course globally, collecting data, the costs, processing it? So if you take the example of any organization, um, take, take government. Um, 
it, it has vast amounts of data that it collects, mm -hmm. often in analog form. So you, you need A, to collect the data. B, you need governance mechanisms on the data. And the data have to be in a form that you can actually process to yeah. digitally mm -hmm to uh, be able to derive the kind of insights that you, uh, that you want to derive. Mm -hmm. Now, I've given you that example from government, mm -hmm. but you could take the same question from the perspective of business. Yep. And you know, business would ask the question, again, uh, if you were a Flipkart, or if you were, a, yeah. um, if you were an Amazon, mm -hmm. or if you were a Reliance, mm -hmm. uh, you would be asking the question, how might I use this data uh, that I have about my customers? Mm -hmm to better provide services to them. You, firms have to decide what the end state they want is, yeah. and then sort of determine the appropriate level of investment mm -hmm. in data uh, architecture mm -hmm. and the analytics required to solve their problem. Everybody doesn't have to be an Amazon or a Google. Yeah. Uh, you have to right size what you need for your own requirements. The issue of privacy is another thing related to big data, which raises a lot of concerns among people. What do you have to say about that? So there are two interesting uh, recent studies. I mean, there was a, a survey actually conducted on um, how connected cities are, and they surveyed citizens. And interestingly, citizens in, um, in cities were willing to share their private information mm -hmm. in exchange for uh, safer cities, for instance. Um, so in some cases, I think what's in all cases really important is that the data are being collected, the citizens are informed or the consumers are informed about what purposes the data are being collected for, and then there is no deviation from the use of that data other than for the purpose that it was collected for. Then there are an entire class of applications for which privacy is going to be a fundamentally uh, uh, an important issue. And organizations working with the stakeholders, in this case government and citizens, will have to situate themselves in this two-dimensional space mm -hmm. to figure out where they want to be in this trade-off between confidentiality, protecting confidentiality and still deriving utility. So let's talk about studying this particular field. What do you think Indian universities need to do to cater to the demands of this particular field? And also do you think Indian students would prefer going abroad for this? So uh, I can speak to the latter. Mm -hmm. um, so at Carnegie Mellon, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a, a real array of programs. This is an area of considerable depth mm -hmm. and strength at Carnegie Mellon. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we are the only university that I know of in the world that has a department of machine learning, a, a department devoted just to machine learning. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, considerable capacity mm -hmm. and expertise in this area. According to reports, big data will also challenge the workforce in a way. It will also create job disruption amongst uh, companies. What do you have to say about that? My, my view is we've gone through multiple um, uh, revolutions, uh, industrial revolutions, right? So if you think of um, what happened when electricity was invented mm -hmm. and replaced steam, mm -hmm. it took out a whole class of jobs on account of the fact that there was a new technology that had been put in place. The question that's an open question is, are we looking at a similar kind of um, industrial revolution happening, happening now? Um, and then people will just, there'll be, there will be change, yes. um, and there will be new kinds of opportunities emerging. So my final question, I'm gonna wrap up with this one. Uh, what, would, what advice would you give to all the students who are aspiring to get into this field, students who want to know more about big data? How should they go about things? So, I mean, if, if these are kids in, in uh, school, mm -hmm. I'd say just be passionate and intellectually curious mm -hmm. um, and uh, about solving problems. Mm -hmm. um, what is big data today is not going to be big data tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're constantly curious and uh, excited about what you're doing. I think there are lots of opportunities. So I'm really optimistic and if you're young, I think it's a fun time to be young. I think there's lots of great things coming down the pike. Great, thank you so much. Okay, alrighty, you're welcome.